And I would like to introduce our speakers who are inspired of the fact that it is a morning uh, here now. Nikolai Heritonov, Chairman of the State Duma Committee on Regional Policy and Issues of the North and Far East. Jo Georgi Korshinov, who is representing Uktinsky Technical University and also he is a member of the Working Group on the Development of uh, the Arctic Region. Viktor Tolokonsky, Governor of Krasnoyarsk Territory and Chair of Northern Forum, Valery Mitko, President um, of uh, um, the Polar Commission uh, of um, uh, the Maritime Council under the government of St. Petersburg, and Esko Mustamaki, the CEO of Arctic Helsinki Shipyard, Alexei Nikitschenko, CEO and Vice President of uh, NISE, and uh, Mikhail Pogodaev, Executive Director of the Northern Forum. Uh, before we start our discussion, I would like to uh, give some lines of our uh, novel, Mr. Kaverin, to captains. I was working in the north and I was bringing to the Kolsky Peninsula the mail and I also worked with doctors uh, to those hunters who fell ill. It was in the 1930s. It was the period of some euphoria, but it was uh, a very very special attention that the state paid to the exploration of the Arctic region and uh, many uh, conquests that uh, we uh, can be proud of, uh, they go back to those times why do we have such an unexpected name, the Arctic welcomes other region? Well, that's because uh, that if uh, we have a look at uh, the state program for the development of the Arctic region, we will see that almost 70% uh, of all the um, uh, capital investments and uh, measures to be taken are uh, linked to the development of um, the Arctic region and, uh, for example, of the Institute of uh, Water Studies and also the shipbuilding industries. Everything is included into uh, these um, uh, studies and also the Northwest Geological Expedition. I can name many institutions and organizations that were working on those issues and we can recall such uh, names as Valayerko, uh, Aksarka, and uh, others, there were uh, specialists from Leningrad, from Moscow, and they were exploring the northern regions. And uh, we should uh, uh, recall all those ties. Uh, we were developing the northern sea route, and we had um, the necessary military bases that were located there even before the Great Patriotic War. And uh, we uh, still have them now. So all of it is located in the Arctic region. And we understand that the Northern Sea Route so far does not have a very important economic uh, significance, but it has political um, significance because Russia should pay special attention to uh, the Arctic regions. And I would like now to give the floor to Mr. Haritonov. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, good morning, dear participants of the conference. Now Russia faces strategic goals for exploring the Arctic region. And in 1937, the first uh, expedition, polar expedition, uh, the platforms started. Uh, it was of uh, Papanin's uh, four specialists that showed their courage and they love the territory, they love the region, and it serves uh, as a guideline, as an example for our young people and then uh, during the flight um, our um, dear specialists they uh, perished uh, during this expedition uh, the um, airplane has not been found and uh, there are some search operations still ongoing for that purpose and our um, uh, committee on uh, policy and issues of the north and far east is trying to find uh, this lost expeditions russia is the leading arctic uh, superpower and um, it plays a very important role 
in the international relationships, one of the significant factors for exploration of the Arctic region is the development of the NSR. It has some competitive advantages uh, in comparison with other routes like the Suez Canal, uh, Channel and um, its length uh, saves time and also it uh, helps to reduce uh, the fuel costs and other costs and this route uh, brings us uh, uh, on a shorter way to oil fields and also it helps to pr uh, ensure the necessary transportation. Uh, it is very important, is a key thing to bring uh, uh, goods and services from other regions. In the Soviet times, it was in high demand, but uh, currently from Anhalgesk to uh, Chukotka, there are no uh, large port, seaports, and uh, there were military bases and other sites that were served by uh, our, uh, um, our fleet, and uh, now the structure, the infrastructure is uh, dilapidated in uh, 2009, uh, it was adopted the plan for the development of NSR, but now we don't have the enough coordination of our authorities uh, to ensure the program, uh, the progress, and we have uh, the state program for the economic development of the Arctic up to 2020 and for long-term prospect, and the main part of the problems can be eliminated when uh, the law on the Arctic zone of the Russian region is um, a past, and uh, our committee has uh, um, paid atten special attention to that, and uh, uh, the draft was uh, um, uh, was not submitted, uh, unfortunately, in the severe conditions of the Arctic regions, and uh, deer breeding is one of the most important uh, areas, but we don't have enough funding, so we'd like to call you for uh, exploring uh, the Arctic region, and we should provide support for indigenous people. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the support for indigenous people uh, is reduced and also for uh, DM breeding is also reduced. And um, in our committee, we were elaborating the draft law on the government support for indigenous um, people who work in uh, the Arctic region. And uh, this draft law was submitted to the State Duma. This concept was supported by almost all the regions. And next week, the 22nd of June, uh, we will be examining that on the uh, plenary session. Unfortunately, people are leaving, the high qualified personnel is leaving the Arctic region. Uh, they are moving to um, regions with favorable conditions, and we can stop this process if we uh, create comfortable um, conditions for these people and our. Uh, a policy should be uh, focused on uh, attracting people to the Arctic regions, and we should try to resolve geopolitical, environmental issues, and also the issues of the development of the Arctic zone of the Russian Federation. Unfortunately, uh, there are uh, almost no laws on these uh, issues and, uh, for example, the law on the social security. We have it, but it is not necessary for resolving all the issues of providing pensions and also um, uh, paying for these routes to be taken. And I would like to uh, emphasize that uh, um, more and more people are leaving uh, these regions and the regulations do not comply uh, with uh, our reality and do not comply with the orders and assignments that the president uh, has set for us. So this, uh, the constituent entities and regions of Russia should cooperate together uh, to ensure this progress and all, all the regions have uh, their uh, legislative initiatives. So we have uh, to have the set of law like the polar code, for example, for the exploration of uh, the Arctic region, because uh, we should uh, use all the potential of the mineral resources of the regions and also to improve uh, the um, conditions for the population of the Arctic regions. And we should preserve uh, the nature of the Arctic and uh, the large industrial companies should uh, comply with all the 
requirements because we should uh, uh, remember that the most valuable thing of the territory is the people who live there. And we had our meeting in Yakutia, in Kamchatka, in severe conditions of polar night. And indi indigenous people are living in these conditions. They're uh, bringing up their children. And uh, uh, we respect them for that, though they are living in very complicated conditions. Still, they are hospitable. They are open. And I would like to remark that where our people uh, live, this is our territory. And thank you very much, the organizers of such conference. And I think that uh, today we do not uh, have a large audience. But I think uh, in two years, in three years, uh, we will have more and more people interested in this topic. And we will have serious investors. And of course, we should take into consideration all our um, interests and we should focus on them. Uh, and it is not accidental that uh, uh, yesterday it was like a first single a signal given to us um, the um, largest uh, nuclear icebreaker was uh, put on water in St. Petersburg. Thank you very much, Nikolai Mikhailovich. It was a very interesting uh, speech and the analysis of how uh, we stand in the Arctic regions and getting back uh, to the system of the development of NSR, if we have a look at all the set of measures and events to be to be taken. It is not only uh, the Arctic regions that uh, take part in it, uh, but uh, for example, large mechanical engineering centers from other Russian regions, uh, because uh, in the framework of uh, this uh, uh, state program, we will have uh, to build uh, 35 icebreakers. And we have uh, all other um, uh, orders, like by nuclear fleet. And uh, you know that uh, Luke Oil is building its own um, nuclear uh, icebreakers. So of, as for shipbuilding, this is a very important program. And as, the pres uh, as for the preservation of the territory, in the framework of the EU, uh, they have a program uh, that is uh, focused on the environmental threat that exists in the Arctic region. So if there is no population, uh, there is no territory. So we uh, should uh, uh, bring them some environmental truth and uh, that is uh, a question of the territorial uh, integrity of our territory. And uh, there is outflow of the population uh, out of these regions. And uh, uh, almost uh, 340,000 people have left the Mormonsk region. So we need the law on the Arctic regions. And we need special uh, conditions for providing uh, favorable life standards for people there. And we should uh, uh, train personnel to work in the Arctic regions. Um, they have uh, some institutions uh, like the Arctic University in Murmansk. But it is very important for us uh, to have the elements to prepare all uh, to train the personnel in different uh, uh, areas, uh, for example, for polar aviation, because there are um, a lot of uh, specific features. And now I would like to give the floor uh, Georgi Korshinov, uh, who is representing um, the Uhta State Technical University. Uh. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Distinguished delegates, I would like to offer you some of my consideration and considerations and information with regard to our practical approaches to the issues already discussed here, including the human resources issues. So I shall also offer some of the considerations of a general nature. First of, we must remember the geopolitical situation of uh, the area we are discussing. And uh, I would like to mention the Republic of Komi, located in the Russian Arctic zone in the high north. The region also, the territory also belongs to the Barents Euro Arctic region. The Republic of Komi is a strategic uh, base in terms of human resources uh, trans and transport. It's uh, the area of strategic importance for international oil and gas pipelines. 
I am glad to mention the fact that uh, the authorities of the region, headed by Mr. Gavrikov, is now actively supporting the issue of Russian Arctic development. We are mostly focusing on adequate resource management. This is not a new subject. The UCTA is the motherland of the first Russian oil, which was discovered exactly here. So what are the possible areas of cooperation between the Republic of Komi, the Russian Arctic, and the European Arctic? We are talking a whole set of areas, starting with the geological survey, development and exploitation of oil and gas deposits, oil refinery, transportation of carbohydrates, and the energy, the energy industry, the transport infrastructure, logistics, environment protection, investment, housing construction, and many other areas. In the Republic, the Republic of Komi is uh, the home base for a number of international companies, uh, which is proof of uh, active uh, international cooperation. The companies uh, mentioned in this slide are already implementing major projects. What are the human resources issues uh, and what are the challenges related to them? As uh, Mr. Chairman has mentioned, uh, we suffer from the drain of uh, residents. Uh, we do have to face a demographical problem. Back in the 1990s, uh, 125,000 people inhabited the town of Vorkuta, and uh, at the 1st of January this year, the population was under 60,000. The situation is similar with other towns and cities. We need to pay special attention to the development of company towns or mono towns to level out the demographic situation. The demographic situation should be given a realistic assessment, which is important for further development of the Russian Arctic. The director of my university pays special attention to the mono towns development because they are most vulnerable to economic crises. And the higher the schools of higher education are of paramount importance to retain the younger generation in the towns. They will stay in the Arctic towns if there are clearly streamlined mechanisms of interaction between the local authorities, the R&D institutes, and the educational establishments. And that should be, stream, uh, should be put in line with the needs of economical development. Of course, there are syllabuses drafted and implemented in cooperation with the businesses so that uh, education is provided to those uh, specialists uh, which are demanded by the local industries. I would like to emphasize our special attention given to setting up centers of education, outposts of education, attractive for the younger people in the regions and territories of the Russian Federation. And they should be made even more attractive than those in Moscow and St. Petersburg with no bias to our colleagues from those towns. The younger people must have a clear perspective of the possibilities of education in line with their aspirations for creativity and progress. We cooperate with the businesses. And that cooperation also targets to implement the programs of international cooperation. We are setting up international competence centers in all the towns and territories of the Russian Arctic. This involves a lot of challenges. We need to go on with the research and scientific cooperation between the businesses and the higher schools. Innovation businesses are mostly important for the Arctic zone's development. 
At one of the pre previous panel discussions, we have discussed that we need a clear coordination between the regional and the federal programs of the Russian Arctic development. And we do need to involve the big Russian businesses in those innovation educational programs. We need to find our partners and to clearly define the home base universities and institutes of education. Special attention must be given to the needs of this country to clearly define the priorities and to make a more active effort in doing so. This morning, together with our colleagues, we were saying that this is what is done already in the rest of the world. The Arctic University is targeting specific new emerging markets, targeting cooperation between the higher schools with businesses and implementation of joint projects between the international Arctic communities. We need to clearly shape well-defined and clearly drafted Russian national programs for Arctic development so that we could be more active in cooperating with our foreign partners. I would like to mention in conclusion yet another subject, which is uh, the significance of information. The information field has been mentioned by the president of this country. We need to promote the image of the Russian Arctic. We need to raise awareness and popularity of the engineering professions. One year ago, we initiated the setting up of a consortium, a consortium of uh, Arctic universities of various countries. Together with several federal agencies, we are now implementing the Federal Information Project, which is called the, uh, the Arctic News Portal. We have already participation from the five regions and 18 towns of the Arctic zone. We still need to set up an interactive map of the human resources and educational resources of the area and a map of investment projects. This effort is already headed by Mr. Spector. This year, we are planning to reach out to all our existing and possible international partners. Thanking you for your attention, I hope we all agree that the younger generation is the future of the Arctic. And of course, the graduates of the universities and schools for higher, for higher education are our future and our home base. These pictures were taken at the graduation ceremony at one of the universities. Arctic education in the Arctic zone is a very topical issue. We need to better understand the potential of the area, and we need to proceed with this subject of discussion. I hope at the forum next year we get included into the main program. This year, this is a conference on the margin of the forum, so to speak, and some of the delegates do not always pay attention to the optional events. We might think about better positioning this conference for the next, for the purposes of the next forum. Thank you very much, Mr. Korshinov. With regard to planning the event next year, we. This panel discussion is attended by a representative of Ross Congress, and we shall forward our recommendations and proposals to the relevant state authorities. I would like to, pay, to draw special attention of the delegates here and of all the panelists to the four points that constitute the agenda of the dis discussion. And uh, let us get back to them when we resume this, when we, uh, when we summarize the session. We have already provided an initiative on the strategy of the Northwestern Region Development for 2020 and the program of social and economic development of the Arctic Zone. It involves seven events, and all of them are intercoordinated. But back when we were analyzing the documents for strategic development of the Arctic, of the eight Arctic regions and border areas, 
of the Russian Federation, we found out that there is a lack of interregional coordination with regard to engineering infrastructure and uh, social support, human resources uh, provision, and environmental protection. We could not discover any special targeted actions prescribed here. We don't need any more additional human resources to better consolidate our efforts and to better coordinate all the relevant programs. Uh, when uh, all of you contribute uh, your efforts uh, within the given budget uh, to cooperation, I think it's quite feasible. Talking about uh, education and training, of the needed human resources, I believe that uh, all the educational establishments now have all they need to set up uh, base departments and uh, chairs. They can involve uh, the best brain, the best brains, to head uh, to manage the graduation papers and graduation projects of the undergraduate students. And those are the people, the experts, who have to head the graduation commissions and the enrollment commissions of the universities. Yet another point. Right now, we see a decreasing number of branches, of regional branches of universities based in Moscow and St. Petersburg, and this is a well-justified policy except for the Arctic regions. Representation and a footprint of the leading Russian universities is an important factor for Arctic development, so we might want to think about what can be done to retain those university branches and affiliated sites in the Arctic region. So please, the floor is yours. Mr. Kolokonsky, thank you, dear colleagues. Uh, so I'd like to say that uh, the topic of uh, such a session is um, interesting for federal authorities and for all the regions of uh, the Arctic region. Uh, probably it was not um, the most ideal time for holding this session, but uh, we should have some basics for the development of the state policy and state program. And secondly, there are many examples of uh, creating a new kind of economy for future development of the Arctic. So we are not only uh, continuing what uh, Kaverin uh, mentioned uh, and described, uh, we are still doing a lot and working on that. We have the research institutions. We have have universities doing that, new manufacturing are being created, a new fleet has been built uh, over the last uh, year in Krasnoyarsk. Uh, we started uh, to uh, produce uh, coal and um, I learned that with uh, Dixon um, it was decided how we can uh, make life uh, more comfortable in the regions and now they are producing coal. So the first um, part of uh, uh, this uh, coal production has uh, already been transported and they uh, plan to produce uh, about 10 million tons and they will be developing their capacity of the seaport, 10 million tons is a very huge volume, and uh, the large Krasnoyarsk region uh, is uh, producing 37, 13. 8 ton, million tons, and uh, if we compare that with uh, these northern regions uh, and considering the NSR, it will be transported and it will be exported and started from uh, this year, for example, the oil on, in the eastern uh, part of the region with Hatanga, Rosneft and Lukoil uh, will be producing um, Oil in um, industrial volumes, uh, 22 million of 
uh, tons of uh, crude is uh, produced there, and uh, uh, there are new capacities of uh, mining, uh, for example, in Norilsk. There are many field-oriented projects, and uh, uh, at our meetings of uh, State Commission on the development of this region, we are considering all the new high technologies and uh, we are doing active work and it, it is not right to say that there is no coordination but it is a kind of fragmented part of uh, the policy regional policy we don't have unified policy yet uh, besides uh, their scientific uh, development is also suffering from that because uh, science is following practice in this regard. For example, even uh, today, uh, what uh, has been already mentioned by previous uh, speakers, um, it is a kind of selective approach. And it is still there. In the Arctic, there are regions, there is just one constituent entity, and that is the Arctic. And problems uh, are clear, the preservation of uh, the population, providing educational opportunities, culture opportunities, we cannot do without it. But in some regions, for example, like in Krasnoyarsk, the Arctic is just a part of the regions. For example, the total population is 3 million people. But uh, in the Arctic region of uh, um, this um, constituted entity, it is only 30% belongs to the Arctic. But if we consider this budget for three, uh, uh, 300,000 people, um, 3, 4 billion rubles, this is the budget, and uh, if you calculate that, you will um, never see such figures for other regions to support this population. Though uh, a lot of added value is uh, created there, and new economy is being developed, also there is a huge number of um, different places in the Arctic regions where um, there are some working shifts that is the basis of uh, the economy and it is a very interesting experience and sometimes it is even more effective because uh, it allows us uh, to um, get the necessary effective feedback from the Arctic economy. But actually, um, there are different situations, uh, for example, for Komi and for Murmansk region, uh, preservation of the population, uh, that is uh, the most important, the basic task. But as for Krasnoyarsky cry, optimization is the key issue, optimization of the population, and um, we would like to relocate the population more effectively. Uh, for example, the Nor Nickel uh, company, they are saying that they pay uh, many taxes, uh, 33, 34 billion uh, rubles are paid for that, but the means they are spent there in the northern regions uh, just to support the population, and there is no possibility uh, to redistribute uh, these funds because it is very uh, expensive to provide the necessary living standards for these people. Uh, for example, Banco, uh, 22 uh, million tons of uh, uh, oil, and um, there is uh, the necessary uh, tax uh, revenues from that, but the budget expenses are quite huge because uh, they are building the perinatal center and hospitals, they are developing um, some cultural sites sites and spot complexes, uh, infrastructure is very imp uh, expensive, uh, and transport as well. And the second block of issues is very important for me as uh, the governor, uh, because of uh, the lack of uh, the unified uh, system, uh, we cannot uh, get serious uh, long-term uh, decisions that have to be made to develop the necessary infrastructure for the Arctic region. And it emphasizes uh, the lack and the absence of uh, a targeted program because it is very difficult uh, to prove to the Ministry of Transport that there is a problem of the Arctic aviation because uh, this is a problem for all the regions. I worked in different regions. I asked them to explain to me why this uh, region uh, should uh, use uh, all the budget just to support this uh, uh, 60 um, airplanes and um, 
to support also um, the airdromes for that. And there's a huge uh, amount of money and can be spent in there, but in, uh, cannot establish the Ministry of uh, Civil Aviation there. And uh, some technical issues should be resolved, and then we can conclude an agreement because we need investment. We need a clear long-term program and um, also how we can provide all the administra uh, administrative measures and um, support how we can support the seaport because uh, there are very um, complicated and comprehensive requirements for supporting them and there are also energy issues to be considered it is quite difficult uh, for us uh, to uh, resolve uh, some other issues issues uh, like the residential issue, for example, in the Arctic regions, um, the majority of the houses there, these are two floor houses and um, just explorers, they left the houses and these houses have to be renovated. But how can that be done so that uh, the technologies are effective? and um, so that it is not so expensive. Now we have the new module constructions for schools and cultural institutions. So there are different things. And uh, I think that uh, some systematic approach can be adopted for all the regions. And if something uh, has already been invented in some regions, it can be applied in other regions as well. Uh, the same uh, is true. Uh, for the fact that, for example, when we um, uh, contracting the state program for the support of indigenous people, we are spending our money and uh, um, as for our budget, this is not a huge problem. But if we consider that from the strategic point of view, now, um, it is not just resolving short term issues uh, than giving just giving money for short-term tasks. But we should think about the prospect. What will happen in 30 years? What will happen in 50 years? How can we support the traditions of indigenous people? How we can develop the traditional form of the economy? Uh, what can be changed? How the educational um, program uh, can be reformed and can be developed so that it is uh, the state of the art program for the 21st century just and preserving the existing um, traditions and also scientific recommendations there are no systematic management administrative uh, solutions and the committee on the regional policy they are dealing with the issues uh, of the arctic but it is uh, uh, true for the ministry of education Ministry of Transport and other ministries. They consider it like as a part of the problem, but as for us, it is quite evident for me that there are ministers who are in charge of uh, these uh, specific issues, but we need a single unified policy and uh, there is uh, no coordination which is necessary for that because we need funds for that, we need budget for that, uh, and we need investment to develop the region. That is why I think that uh, one of our suggestions as a result of this session is to um, uh, form uh, some management bodies uh, who will be in charge of it, who will, uh, that will represent uh, executive authorities, that will develop uh, NSR and will resolve the problems of, uh, no of the Northern Territory. And uh, the special budget should be allocated for that, for some field-oriented programs and other aspects, um, just to cut uh, down uh, the cost. But but still, uh, together with that, increasing the efficiency of the resources that uh, are targeted for that, if we have some management solutions. Thank you, Viktor Alexandrovich.
uh, those uh, issues that you have raised right now, uh, they are linked to uh, coordination, to the coordination of our federal structures, uh, because uh, if we uh, cal calculate different costs for NSR, like 260 million rubles for the development and exploration of the Arctic region, we have huge resources, but um, you truly mentioned this analysis that uh, this resources are fragmented and uh, for example uh, if uh, the plan of uh, Lingopoly and the regions coincide in terms of the 30 percent uh, it is only the 50 percent of uh, the actual use of resources in the north uh, for example if uh, you don't support the housing and utility sector uh, then uh, uh, you will have to totally uh, renovate it and of course we need a unified body for the Ministry of um, the Civil Aviation and uh, your, uh, these regions are using their own funds uh, for um, uh, this support and such projects for uh, the development uh, um, of, uh, for example, Mona cities with all the necessary uh, benefits uh, should be implemented, for example, for the Far East and other regions and we should not forget that uh, uh, the issues of uh, the NSR development is the prerogative of the federal center and scientific uh, research and uh, the elements of uh, uh, geological uh, mapping and um, Oh, so the exploration, it is only 15% uh, of uh, what has been already done. This is also the prerogative of the Federal Center. In St. Petersburg, uh, they will be creating an Arctic cluster that will unite uh, um, different bodies and authorities of St. Petersburg and the Leningrad region, and they will be dealing with the problems of the development and exploration of the Arctic region. It is a very important uh, direction in which we should be moving and our committee and the federal uh, in the State Duma should be working on that because these are good initiatives that have been mentioned in the documents but we should work on that uh, and now I would like to give the floor to Valery Mitko president uh, of uh, and uh, he's representing the Polar Commission of the government of St. Petersburg thank you mr. chair I did not know that uh, Mr. Tolokonsky was going to make a speech today, but anyway, I was going to discuss the need existing in this country and uh, in other Arctic countries, uh, the need to have a structure that could take care of the sustainable development of the Arctic region. In the absence of such a structure, and it may be shaped very differently, remember the GOS plan, the state plan that was binding for all the agencies and industries. A state Arctic Development Committee would be a good step towards setting up an Arctic organization, a national Arctic organization. That's at least the terminology we use at my academy. Let me give a small but important example of the Northern Sea Route. How many times sir, has the commission been convened? On the 9th of March in Murmansk, there was no decision taken. Next. No, on the 25th of February in Moscow, no decision was taken with regard to the NSR. There should be some single economic management entity. On the 24th of May, there was another meeting convened, but again, the decision taking was postponed. I should not, as a scientist, I should not use the word never, but we do need to take a decision on properly managing the Northern Sea Route. We don't have any document for Uni for comprehensive spatial planning for the Russian Arctic. And in the absence of it, we cannot set up an adequate management system. I've already 
mentioned this in my conclusive speech at a different panel discussion. And uh, this discussion dedicated to the scientific uh, contribution to the Arctic development is scheduled for the last day of the forum. This is low efficiency. Let us remember this for the future forum planning. This is the title of my presentation, and uh, it is in line with the content I have prepared for my presentation. The title of my presentation is The Scientific Production and Educational Potential of St. Petersburg for Stable Development of the Russian Arctic. And yes, of course, we need to remember the Smolny, the seat of the St. Petersburg authorities here. And uh, since we are discussing our cooperation with the regions, uh, we need to mention the fact of the development, developing the Arctic cluster. And uh, St. Petersburg is uh, preceding cooperation with the Murmansk region. The cooperation agreement has just been signed. One of the projects bringing together the efforts of uh, not only the Russian regions, uh, but of several other countries. You can see that uh, the principal country in this graph is China. St. Petersburg is located exactly on the borderline between the Baltic Transport Corridor and uh, the Northern Sea Route and uh, the Great Silk Road, which uh, has been discussed by the Russian and by the, Ch by the heads of the Russian and Chinese states since 2013. Of course, we like the efforts our Chinese colleagues are contributing to this dialogue, but we should not be lagging behind. We should not be second to the contribution made by China. They are not an Arctic state, and they are not a member of the Arctic Council. So talking from the point of view of applied sciences, we can say that if we want to further develop the Northern Sea Route, we should not develop it in silo. We should not develop it as a competitor. It should be considered as an integral part of this whole comprehensive transport system, as shown in the slide. And then only it can benefit to the to the. It can, ben it can contribute to the development of the whole transportation system, including the Great Silk Road. I'm saying well-known things, and I'm not an economist. I have no economic background. Geopoli geopolitically speaking, this kind of development is our future. We are often mentioning pragmatic approaches and the focus on today. I would not like to mention China too often. The day before yesterday, I came back from China, where we had a meeting, and uh, our Chinese colleagues agree that uh, the Northern Sea Route is not very efficient economically now, but politically it is. And in 30 years' time, it will yield an economic, a lot of economic benefits. This uh, is uh, a slide dedicated to the Belcomoor project, which is part of the transportation development scheme. Even as we are speaking today, if we discuss the need to transport, uh, to use uh, big ocean vessels for transportation purposes, you would know that uh, the northern sea route is already using vessels like this, but uh, there is uh, there is not yet enough uh, shipment uh, needs uh, to take ad to make adequate use of these vessels uh, this effort should be continued here i am offering you a concise flowchart uh, dedicated to what mr tolok uh, 
Tolokonsky has been talking about. We need a single system of managing the Arctic the Russian Arctic zone. It needs a single control center. I'm not saying it should be located in St. Petersburg. Some believe that it should be located in Murmansk. Some stand for Arkhangelsk. But I would like to point out that there is virtually no alternative to establishing this control center. Why is there no alternative? Here are some justifications uh, why we need this nucleus of uh, the Arctic organization of the state. This country needs uh, targeted investments uh, and justified investments to be properly allocated in the Arctic zone to bridge the gap between the inbound and the outbound flows of capital. This will contribute to lessening the social and political tension in the society of this country, in the civil society of this country. There are a number of geopolitical factors involved in defining the stable development of the Russian Arctic. A very important factor here is the human resources potential. This, the significance of this factor is very often overlooked. We are killing our human resources potential. Several days ago, Mr. Patanin spoke about how human resources are organized in Norilsk Nickel. The, star, the personnel there are getting very high wages and salaries, but that is not the most important thing. I'm dealing with undergraduate and postgraduate students in my academy, students both from Russia and abroad. In the good old times, education was not only about teaching, it was also about upbringing. And the high intellectual potential has always been considered a priority. Right now, everybody is so material. In this regard, we must remember that St. Petersburg is a truly is a true intellectual center, not only of the Russian Arctic, but also of this whole country. And for this exact reason, well, it should become an outpost town or a pillar town. Grow the intellectual potential of our younger generation. This may prevent further drain of the young and talented from this country. If there is if there is a base town, people may come and go, but we need to maintain a certain amount of population and a certain amount of students. This is the way we should consider the migration of uh, residents and uh, inhabitants of a town, and there should be scientific justification of spatial distribution of human resources. This is possible to do, given that a control center is established exactly as was described by Mr. Tolokonsky. I would like to conclude here the subject is endless because the Arctic zone means so much for Russia and not only for Russia. We often talk to our foreign colleagues and we always describe the Arctic as the pivot point of international cooperation. and. This is a very positive fact, of course. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Mitko. You have made a very important contribution. Your comment about the intellectual potential is absolutely relevant. The human resources are of paramount importance for Arctic development, but I would like to get back to some material issues. 
the, region, the regional development for the regions that are part of the Arctic zones are agreed and confirmed within the program for spatial territorial development. And now we need to think about bringing together and making those plans compatible for the different Arctic regions. Also, we need to think about uh, the standardized uh, design of uh, the housing quarters and uh, industrial areas uh, in the Arctic towns. Look well at Gazprom are already implementing such spatial development projects in the Russian Arctic. Just to give one example, Terry Berka, Terry Berka is, is, or rather was, an abandoned uh, settlement, little township, and right next to it, uh, growing now or having grown now is uh, a township uh, for the personnel of the LNG plant. Uh, some of them come and work in shifts. In some areas, that's possible and justified, but in some other areas, permanent settlement must be taken care of, and that, of course, requires investments. Another point is the development of the Northern Sea Route in terms of its infrastructure. You would know that one floating NPP has already been completed by the atom flood, and the second one is under construction now. That's an important step towards infrastructural support of the Arctic zone. The natural resources like gold and platinum and oil and gas and the different kinds of coals like black coal and brown coal, those resources are unique in their quantity and composition. There is no such uh, explored, uh, explored scope of uh, natural resources in any other country. Hence, uh, the transportation development uh, becomes uh, of critical importance, including the coastal sea routes and uh, here, I would like to give the floor to Esko Mustinek, uh, the executive director of Ar Arctic Helsinki shipyards uh, with Russian assets but located in Finland. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning, dear delegates. Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, the headline of my presentation is Sea Transportation Solutions for Arctic Logistic Needs. If we want to develop the Arctic region or we want to increase the traffic on the Northern Sea Route, we will need solutions for the sea transportation. Next slide. Uh, Arctic Helsinki Shipyard started operation f five years ago and we are today a fully owned subsidiary of United Shipbuilding Corporation. We employ about 1,000 persons at the yard, and today we have an order backlog of over 700 hundred million euros. Next slide. Helsinki Shipyard is today specialized in Arctic shipbuilding uh, technology and building icebreakers, Arctic offshore and other special vessels. And due to our ownership, we unite the marine industry clusters of Finland and northwestern Russia. Next slide. Arctec is a new company, but we have an extensive experience. The shipyard started operation 150 years ago in the same location. Uh, it's more than 100 years since we built the first vessel that was called Icebreaker. And totally, uh, so far, we have built about 60% of all icebreakers in operation today. Uh, outstanding number of high quality references, and that includes uh, many, many icebreakers for Finnish border navigation to Sweden and especially to Soviet Union and, and Russia, and includes also two nuclear icebreakers. Next slide, please. Uh, sea transportation solutions for, for Arctic logistic needs. Uh, as you 
probably know the most energy efficient way of transportation goods is by sea. And of course, Arctic conditions is a challenge, but that is a challenge for all transportation modes. Today we have new technologically advanced ship designs that make the Arctic shipping easier than ever, which doesn't mean that it is easy. Uh, today it's possible and feasible to move in Arctic water, waters during a longer season than earlier, and, and reasons are two. The easier ice conditions due to climate change, and the second uh, reason is that uh, Vessel technology has, has improved and we have better solutions available today than 20 years ago. So the growing transportation need can be taken care of with the modern fleet. Next slide. Here are some pictures of, of products that we deliver from Helsinki. Next slide, please. Uh, in the beginning of Arctic operation, we delivered first two uh, multipurpose ice-breaking supply vessels for to Sokom flot for operation in, in Sahalin, Vitus Bering and Alexei Shirikov, 13 megawatt propulsion power, ice-breaking capability, 1.7 meter. And uh, they have been in operation in Sahalin since the delivery. Next slide. The following vessel was very interesting, uh, uh, technically interesting vessel, uh, multi-purpose ice-breaking emergency rescue vessel, uh, not very big, 76 meter in length, uh, propulsion power only 7 meter, guaranteed ice-breaking capability 1 meter, but as you can see from the picture, it seems to move sideways. Uh, next slide, which is a video showing uh, some clips from the ice trials made in winter 2015 in, in the Arctic. Here uh, you can see how it is mo moving sideways or what we call oblique ice breaking. The vessel was uh, able to break 1.2 meter thick ice in the Arctic uh, straight ahead or afterwards. Uh, it is able to break a 50 meter wide channel so it can assist big tankers uh, and the sideway moving is also a feasibility that, uh, that uh, is useful in ice management tasks or in oil combating duties. This vessel is equipped with oil combating equipment. Here, can, here you can see how it makes ice management and here oblique ice breaking. The hull form is, is asymmetric and this is uh, probably one of the most innovative vessels ever built. Next slide, please. Uh, just at the moment, we have under construction the first LNG-driven icebreaker ever built. This is for Finnish Transport Agency. Uh, length 110 meters, installed power 19 megawatt. And I have a video here about the construction. Next slide. This vessel is ordered by Finnish Transport Agency and will be delivered in a couple of weeks' time. It is now preparing for the LNG sea trials. It takes several days to cool down the LNG system, first with uh, liquid nitrogen and then, uh, then the bunkering with LNG takes a few days more. Uh, this vessel, when it is in operation, will be the most uh, environmental friendly icebreaker because when burning uh, LNG it is uh, much more cleaner than any diesel uh, icebreaker. This technology can be used in, in not only icebreakers also in, in uh, merchant vessels. This is the one of the LNG tanks lifted to the double bottom of the vessel and the LNG tank is 70 meter high. Here you can see the stainless steel that is applied for the ice belt to reduce the, the friction. This is the bridge lifted on top of the superstructure. 
Atsipor propulsion systems, two propellers in the aft and one in the bow, makes the maneuverability uh, very, very good. The LNG system is, of course, very demanding plant on board a vessel, but uh, when ready, it will be a very, very good solution in, in operation in the Baltic Sea. It will fulfill all the future requirements for, for non-sulfur fuel and Tier 3 uh, requirements for, for machinery. And as you can see, it's now probably bunkering for the coming LNGC trials. That technology is available for, for uh, both icebreakers and, and merchant vessels. After the Finnish icebreaker, we will deliver totally four vessels for Sokom Flot. First, one uh, icebreaking platform supply vessel. This will also go to Sahalin. Next slide. and three uh, ice-breaking standby vessels. These vessels look the same, but they are all four slightly different. Uh, propulsion power 30 megawatt and ice-breaking capability 1.7, like in the first two vessels we delivered to Sokom Flot. Next slide. And this is our new, newest order. It's, it's a, a vessel, a ta Arctic tanker for condensate transportation. 44,000 ton dead weight, ice breaking capability guaranteed 1.8 meter, but according to uh, model test carried out here in St. Pete, it will break ice up to 2 meter of thickness. Next slide. So to summarize uh, the presentation, it's possible to design a vessel to meet any transportation need in most Arctic conditions. It is possible to build environmentally friendly vessels using LNG as fuel. Uh, the most challenging transportation needs can be taken care of with the modern vessel techno technology. P make you break the ice. Next slide. This was end of my presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mustamaki. I would like to remind you that the shipyard was called Vatslin in the Soviet times. 100% orders to this uh, shipyard together with the partners in Finland and in Sweden, they came from the Soviet Union. And I would like to remind you about the parameters of the icebreaker that uh, Mr. Haritonov mentioned, uh, 173, that is the length and uh, the capability uh, of uh, ice breaking is 2.8 meters and that is only one um, ice breaker in the line of forthcoming vessels and if we uh, consider um, uh, these enterprises in the northwest uh, region we can prepare any order for the Arctic region uh, for ice breaking fleet uh, for military vessels uh, for um, uh, the new Arctic uh, region and the new equipment and it is very interesting from the environmental uh, point of view and um, the vessel can uh, for example go um, without uh, f for one year without uh, um, going to the port and uh, it is very important um, from the point of view of uh, uh, providing that to uh, hydrometeorological uh, stations and uh, for transportation of different uh, 
cargoes and for uh, seven uh, meteorological stations. And of course, um, the future belongs to such uh, um, high technologies. And another important aspect is the development of the seaport capacities, because icebreakers have been built uh, faster than uh, the port, seaports that we need. So we need a new deep water port in Arkhangelsk. We should uh, develop uh, further uh, the port in Murmansk and uh, the port in Sabato. And uh, Dixon has been already mentioned. And I think that along the way, along the NSR, including the uh, ferries, because that is the final point, the final port for our vessel, that is a very uh, important um, aspect. And we need interregional cooperation, which is key to this for this purpose. And I would like to give the floor to Alexei Nikitschenko, CEO and Vice President of NISE. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I would like to thank the organizers of the forum for inviting me to speak at this panel discussion. I fully identify with the significance of the subjects raised today. The monotown development is one of them. But I have agreed with the moderator that my presentation will be focused on the non-Arctic possibilities for the Arctic regions. I've asked my team to analyze uh, the existing data with regard to all the Arctic countries for the purposes of my presentation at this panel discussion. And uh, a review has been drafted for me. Some of the data I would like to share with you right now, the total investments into the Arctic area development for the last 10 years was over 400 billion US dollars, and 190 billion of them went into the oil and gas production. About 80 billion went into other natural resources, mineral resources. 70 billion went into other industries. and. By different uh, assessments, the investments into Arctic by 2030 is, is estimated at uh, one trillion U.S. dollars. Uh, just to give an idea, that is that is comparable with the GDP of this country. We are talking a huge market uh, providing endless possibilities for the Arctic and non-Arctic regions, for the businesses and for the science. Of course, uh, the locomotion of uh, the development will be a military presence, a uh, military footprint in the region, and uh, the implementation of Arctic projects with regard to the natural resources production and transportation. We have analyzed the project applications. Uh, and in Russia, the projects are already covering about 5 trillion rubles. There are specific projects under consideration as of today, and 4 trillion out of that amount are planned for the stretch of time through 2020. And that means that the businesses, the scientists and researchers, and other stakeholders can target specific markets of, for their future Arctic projects. We have assessed uh, the new offshore deposit-related uh, action plans, and we understand that uh, the investment uh, investment here will be about three trillion Russian rubles. Uh, talking long term, in Russia only. This means a huge market, and of course, the investments will first be channeled to the Arctic regions and areas. The key suppliers may, though, be non-Arctic located enterprises belonging to such industries as transport, research and science, research and development, and mineral resources. We have analyzed uh, the, bre the possible breakdown, and we can see that the key opportunities shall be opened for such industries uh, as uh, uh, machine building, the chemical industry, uh, the metal processing, 
oil refinery and uh, transportation. Heavy engineering, of course, and heavy engineering is one of them, of course. The industrial strategy need to plan for specific scope of work and scope of investment and streamline a scheme of cooperation. Leningrad region and St. Petersburg, Novosibirsk and the Krasnoyarsk territory, the Omsk region and Moscow are estimated as uh, critical players uh, with huge potential in the future projects. The Arctic development will not only be beneficial for the businesses and uh, for providing for new jobs in the Arctic regions. Uh, there is a huge demand that will uh, play into the hands of uh, export substi import substitution, import replacement, and national security issues. Uh, technologies are a separate issue here. Arctic development can uh, provide an impetus for high-tech development. Uh, including robot technologies, fuel technologies, and material studies. The demand here may constitute dozens and hundreds of millions of dollars. Russia has relevant competences and science and research centers to take advantage of, and that can be incorporated into the development plans. We need to remember the Tomsk Robot Technology Center and the similar center in Tomsk. Arctic development may be instrumental for further development of SMEs and they may be very effectively used here, being more flexible for a number of purposes. We estimate uh, that about 10% uh, of efforts going to Arctic projects implementation may be outsourced with uh, small and mid-sized businesses. For the next 10 years, uh, not to mention longer terms, uh, the demand may be over 300 million rubles. SM SMBs are part of our expertise, and we can see that uh, the potential of SMEs is overlooked and somewhat underestimated as of today. There are some regions more favorable for entrepreneur, for enterprise and activities of SMEs. These would be Moscow, St. Petersburg, Belgorod, Lipetsk, Voronezh, uh, and Belgorod, Krasnod uh, regions, uh, Yakutia, Krasnod, Krasnod, uh, Krasnoyarsk uh, territory, and uh, the Republic of Sakha. I would like to conclude by saying that uh, the estimates I have cited are uh, just a very brief and concise representation of the situation for the purposes of this discussion. For implementation of Arctic projects, we need to do a comprehensive analysis and data, uh, analysis of data and facts uh, provided by the businesses, uh, the academia, and uh, the practitioners. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Nikichenko. The information and data you are talking about is being compiled, and a lot of it is compiled by the military. The risks and threats involved with being too slow to implement the Arctic development projects have something to do with the the regulatory red tape amendments are slow to be made, and here we lose some resources which are very expensive, not only economically expensive. We are allocated some resources by the state, but we need to further monitor the social and economic situation in the Arctic. We need to establish a system of controlling the enterprises already duly established. 
and we need agencies coordinating the efforts of all the stakeholders with regard to project implementation and territorial development in the whole of the Arctic of the Russian Arctic zone. With this, I would like to grant the floor to our conclusive presenter, who is Mikhail Pogodayev, the executive director of the Northern Forum. After his presentation, we shall get back to the key issues planned for our today's discussion. Mr. Pogodayev, the floor of you is yours. Thank you. Good morning, dear participants of the forum. I would like to thank the organizers of this conference for the opportunity to speak here and to, to tell you about interregional cooperation in the Arctic region that is carried out in the framework of the organization, in the framework of uh, Northern Forum. Uh, Northern Forum. Uh, has long history and uh, inter-regional uh, 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 cooperation started back in 1974 and uh, we celebrate 25th anniversary uh, as a Northern Forum. It was established in Alaska and the mission is the improvement of living standards of the population in the Northern region uh, through uh, the platform for exchange of uh, knowledge and also implementation of joint uh, projects and also providing sustainable development for the Arctic regions. We have uh, uh, 13 governments uh, participating in the forum and uh, uh, it was a various different dynamics uh, throughout these years. Now we have uh, 13 regions from six countries. And uh, at the uh, last assembly that took place in Irkutsk last year, the presidency um, was transferred to Krasnoyarsky Krai from Yakutia, and now uh, the chairman is uh, Mr. Talakonsky, the governor of Krasnoyarsky region, and thanks to uh, the efforts uh, taken by uh, Yakutia and by Krasnoyarsk, uh, that is a new stage of development of Northern Forum in May, Alaska and Laplandia made a decision to restore their participation in the Northern Forum, so we are preparing for a large event that will take place in Encourage in Alaska. Alaska, and we will be uh, discussing the future development of our organization. Also, uh, last year we had uh, the meeting of um, the Council of Federation and Commission on the Policy of uh, the Development of Arctic Region, and the decision was uh, made to uh, recommend to the regions of uh, the Arctic Zone to take an active part in international cooperation in uh, the Arctic. And thanks to the efforts taken by uh, the Minister of Economic Development and Minister of Foreign Affairs. Um, this is uh, further developed. Uh, then these issues were discussed at different forums, for example, in St. Petersburg, um, the Arctic Future and Today and other events. Earlier this year, we had uh, Krasnoyarsky Economic Forum uh, where in Krasnoyarsk, we had uh, the special roundtable, New Horizons of, Ar of the Arctic Development, and we discussed uh, the same issues as we are discussing today during this plenary session. Uh, as for us, one of our priorities uh, is uh, uh, working together with the Arctic Council, uh, that is the forum of uh, six um, indigenous people organizations, and uh, this is, um, uh, it has a status of observer in the Arctic Arctic Council, and we are working together with uh, them so that uh, the government uh, has a large impact on the development of the uh, policy, because what is developed in the Arctic Council, it has to be implemented on the regional uh, level as well. Besides, we think that it is very important uh, to enhance and to develop the communication, so we are creating new platforms uh, for the exchange of uh, information, for the development of business, culture, uh, tourism. So the Northern Forum is implemented is implementing different projects. One of our main areas is business partnership, business negotiations. We think that economic uh, cooperation uh, can lay the foundation 
Commission for uh, the improvement of our interaction. Besides that, we have uh, some environmental protection uh, projects, also some projects related to uh, social issues, to educational issues and cultural ones. Uh, Mr. Haritonov uh, mentioned in the beginning of our discussion that we have to pay special attention to the development of indigenous people. We also think that indigenous people have unique resource. For example, um, reindeer breeding uh, was mentioned, and also the feeding patterns can serve as uh, um, the foundation for the economic development. And today we think that uh, the development of NSR brings new opportunities in the Arctic regions, and they become a new uh, paradigm, a new paradigm of opportunities uh, for uh, the development of indigenous people, and uh, reindeer breeding is concentrated in coastal areas and it has the potential that has to be unlocked still in terms of this production by reindeer breeding and it can be in future transported to Asian countries. Uh, that is why we are cooperating with different organizations and uh, the so-called Culinary Institute of uh, Indigenous uh, Peoples of the Arctic. And uh, we have an approach uh, not only for uh, the indigenous people, but also together with them and to develop entrepreneurship in this area. Uh, I'd like to pay attention as well to the development of infrastructure in the Arctic. Uh, for regional governments, uh, it is of a special uh, interest, as it has been mentioned, the trans uh, transport accessibility and also energy supply and telecommunication development, the development of social sphere and housing and utilities sector. And one of the projects was implemented in um, Yakutia, Sahar. We have renewable energy conference um, that we hold uh, every year. And the result of uh, uh, this work is that we uh, created the solar uh, station, a unique one, in uh, this republic. Uh, and it is uh, also quite relevant from the point of view of uh, the climate change. The previous speaker has mentioned uh, the potential of uh, investment that is very uh, huge, one trillion dollars, and the major parts uh, of it uh, will be done by Russia. It is implied our foreign colleagues are creating and working out uh, the mechanism of investment into the Arctic region, the so-called uh, the Arctic Protocol. It was approved by uh, International Economic Council. It was approved in Davos this year. And in future, we will uh, have the Arctic Bank of uh, uh, Reconstruction and Development. It will be established. Uh, it uh, has been discussed at other forums, conferences, and platforms that in uh, the Russian Federation, we should be also thinking about uh, working out such an investment uh, mechanism and tool. Um, for example, the Interregional uh, Fund for the Development of Arctic or some other organizations. So we have to work in uh, more actively in this uh, direction, also together with the regions, because regional uh, governments are also interested in the development of in infrastructure on their territories. So I'd like to conclude my speech now, and uh, uh, I would like also to uh, reiterates uh, the fact that uh, the organizers of uh, the forum in uh, future should pay uh, more attention to this topic and it should be included into the main business program uh, because it requires a more profound discussion and analysis. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mikhail Alexandrovich. Uh, it is a very important uh, remark uh, because um, they are related to all the issues and challenges that are, we are facing, the regime of the Arctic exploration that we had in the Soviet uh, Union, uh, it's still um, left for us a sad heritage. And um, in our um, um, 
geographical society uh, we started uh, cleaning uh, the different um, island territories like Frangil Island and we will continue uh, this uh, work and uh, we will be dealing managing uh, the waste from the military and other types of industries and another very important area is uh, the unique uh, system of uh, living patterns uh, of uh, indigenous people who live in the northern regions. In some cases, uh, uh, we should be uh, considering the experience of uh, our Swedish, Danish and Norwegian colleagues, how they deal with that. And in Alaska, in Ireland, uh, these conditions are very important uh, because um, it gives us an overview of uh, the historical experience of the people who have been living there for hundreds of years. And um, for example, as uh, for MPT tax, uh, it is not enough uh, uh, to recover all these traditional uh, crafts that existed on these territories. But uh, if we have new foundation for that, they will be developing um, further on. As for the establishment of this bank, the resources and the funds, they're mainly allocated for consulting uh, and also for for pilot uh, projects, uh, what is uh, uh, linked to some regional um, projects, uh, they are not always allocated for these purposes. And as for the coordination of all these issues, uh, today we should have a vice uh, uh, prime minister in the Russian Federation uh, who will um, be centering all the efforts uh, um, how, for example, it is done in the Far East, and um, they have impressive results over the last uh, two years. And also the, the uh, Ministry uh, for the Affairs of the Far East, uh, and also the Agency for the Development of these Territories. So there are efforts that are taken by the regions, and these efforts should be united. And uh, secondly, we should do the following. Uh, so we have the questions to the speakers and uh, to the audience. We have them in the program. I would like to make a small announcement. In uh, um, D1, we have the signing of uh, an agreement between Australian company and Yakutsky region. It will happen at uh, uh, 11.30. It will be dedicated to the development of a, a coal quarry. And uh, you know that uh, the production of uh, uh, coal is a quite urgent and topical issue for Chukotsky Autonomous Region. And now I would like, according to the order we have, uh, to give the floor So just to, to give the floor to our speakers with two uh, minutes to uh, comment on uh, the questions that have been prepared. So I'd like uh, to give the floor to Mr. Haritonov, please. Both myself and uh, everybody present uh, in this r in this at uh, this podium attended the meeting in the Kremlin when President Putin said that the 21st century is the epoch for the Far East development. But of course, it is not possible to develop the Russian Far East, not including the Eastern Siberia, into this program. But today, we are ready to say that uh, this comprehensive effort should include the the development of the Russian Arctic and the Urals area in terms of the human resources and uh, other areas. If we look at the map, uh, we know that uh, all the northern territories uh, of the Russian Federation eventually lead us to the Arctic. Uh, probably this is invited by the whole logic of this country's development. My colleagues, some of them, have said today that we are just about to make the first step along the long road of the development of Russian Arctic. I hope we live long enough to see the beautiful results of these efforts, targeting not only the Arctic 
regions per se. The Arctic development is like an umbrella for numerous and varied projects. So we might want to think about the goals that are already defined, the tasks that will be issued to various regions for production of equipment and research efforts and the human resources. Innovations are very important here, and I believe the state, the government, shall think about uh, developing packaged agreements. There should be no preferences given to any companies or states because uh, state innovation shall be made the pivot of development of the Arctic regions. Now, let me refer to the education with regard to the Arctic. Since it is of critical importance for drafting the necessary skilled resources. We've had a retreat session of uh, my committee in, in Kamchatka that took place several months ago, and Governor Ilukin took us to see some fish processing factories and other local facilities, and he said that uh, it is not possible to use uh, railroad transportation to supply our products to the continental areas of Russia. The Northern Sea routes, route is absolutely necessary for that. Kamchatka and the Russian Far East have a vested interest in the development of the Northern Sea Route. We shall be able to link that to public procurement, and that will support the interests of private companies as well as the ice-breaking fleet companies. Remember, a year ago, president, the president met some South Korean companies and talking about outsourcing the contracts for sea transportation. We must remember the domestic potential as well. On the 16th of June, the largest icebreaker, the Arctic, was commissioned in St. Petersburg. Distinguished colleagues, we are attending a conference that may further be viewed as a cornerstone in further development of the Russian Arctic, but we need to think about the Arctic Code to serve as an umbrella document for all the involved stakeholders. We have heard today that great progress has been made in the last 18 months, but I'd rather say that we are far from the final outputs and results. We keep discussing and not discussing the free economic areas. In Khabarovsk territory, we have talked at one of our retreat sessions about the needs for a new port, but so far we do not have investors ready to come there. Today's conference invites further legislatory work and administrative work for the purposes of achieving the tasks set for us by the president 18 months ago when, we dis when he discussed the Far East development. Uh, thank you, Mr. Korshinov. The floor is yours. Getting back to the key issues for discussion today, we need, needless to say that in the Arctic zone regions, the mining industry has been always developing and it will go on in its development, as well as the processing industries. That will generate new jobs, but regardless of the market, changing market needs. Some projects may be postponed or delayed. Some will be timely implemented. The need for all those projects is obvious, as well as the need for interregional projects involving different regions of the Russian Federation. 
talking about uh, the training and education, we need to coordinate the efforts of the local authorities and uh, the businesses. Together, they should shape the demand for human resources and plan for those demands for the next several years at least. The Ministry of Education and Science of the Russian Federation should pay special attention to distributing enrollment in universities located in the Arctic regions of Russia. Talking about the innovative potential, I would like to follow up on what was said by Mr. Karitonov. Innovation should be based upon the interests of the state, but uh, businesses are also interested in the Arctic development. We are talking huge money here. Remember the UCTA University, the technical university in UCTA, targeting the oil and gas market needs. It largely involves uh, cooperation with uh, state-owned companies. The pillar universities all over the country can contribute to supplying the Arctic development interests. Public procurement shall be involved in planning out the process. We should target our efforts where they are needed most, even given the tight budget deficit, which will probably not become any less in the years to come. We need to think more about the co-funding of research and development targeting the Arctic development. Thank you. Mr. Tolokonsky is our next contributor. Thank you very much. I would like to thank all my colleagues at the podium. Let me dwell upon the key issues offered for discussion. First of all, I am firmly convinced that the Arctic territories development shall be tightly linked to the mineral resources industries. The economic development and the businesses follow the high quality and rather easily accessible natural resources. This is the obvious foundation of development in the Arctic. Whether or not the interregional infrastructure projects will go forward in the Arctic, that is a subject of my doubts. I rather doubt it. I think the cooperation will rather go in the area of management and administration. Politically, it's uh, very important to identify the targets and goals of infrastructural development. We need to shape better understanding of the fact that for the mining industry, all the costs are based upon the infrastructure. When I am asked who will take care of the power transmission line or of the roads, I always ask, OK, what will your contribution, what will the business contribution be? And they would answer that they will buy, that OK, they will buy an excavator. We need to better work with the business. They should be made more aware that they shall be made liable for a certain share of infrastructural costs. That's part of the profitability scheme of any mining project. But of course, part of the infrastructural development shall be funded by the state. And I'm sure that in the Arctic, uh, the state should take care of the Northern Sea Route. And that means not only the ice-breaking fleet. Remember the Dixon coal mine. It's not only about building the roads and access ways. It's about building townships, providing for the housing and utilities projects. The own power generation is part of the effort that will cut down the costs of coal to be produced. It's not an easy task. Sometimes we need to link that to customs clearance. And that makes uh, exporting more cumbersome. Exporting coal is linked uh, to many other technical and administrative issues. 
not always costly, but often cumbersome and misunderstood. Some contributions shall be made by the regions, and some shall be made from the federal level. If a business is producing coal or oil, they should not be spending their, wasting their efforts on providing for aircraft transportation. There should be a fundamental comprehensive system. My next point, uh, uh, let me dwell with the next point. Uh, I don't think this is a very relevant discussion point. Innovation potential means people. Innovation is generated by human brain. There is not a lot of potential we can have here in the Arctic. I believe that uh, the, this uh, discussion point is slightly overestimating the situation. I believe that uh, Arctic development and uh, exploration shall be based on the state of the art technologies. We can't do with what uh, Kaverin described in his novel. We need to do more in terms of ice breaking, fleet, and uh, energy supply, and this should be made a task for the science and research sector. They should provide us with innovative technologies. The Minister of Energy recently said that the Arctic is so rich in renewable sources of energy, and he cites billions of kilowatts, and he, surpri he was surprised why coil has to be shipped there, and why we need electric power transmission lines. OK, if there is such rich potential there, teach me, an old man like I am, teach me the way to use it. Teach me the way to tap it. Weather stations were tried in the Republic of Saka, but so far the right technologies, the state-of-the-art technologies, are not yet there. All right, uh, let me dwell upon the next uh, discussion point, uh, the scientific and industrial potential in relation to the Arctic exploration. This uh, requires more attention, definitely. There are some regions fully located in the Arctic, and they do have research potential embodied in the university. But in Krasnoyarsk, uh, the Arctic uh, development uh, issues uh, are hardly ever represented, which is wrong. A lot of uh, research centers shall be better involved in issues of Arctic development. I have a note here about uh, the improper balance of uh, supply and demand, which has already been mentioned here today. For some regions, uh, like Krasnoyarsk, territory, they do not have any problem with supplying equipment and human resources for industrial facilities in Norilsk. But doctors are in short supply. Doctors cannot be trained in Norilsk. Technical experts can, but not doctors. Also, better salaries and benefits shall be, must be provided and offered to the doctors screened in other regions. This is just one example to cite. The scientific potential is not targeting Arctic de development to the extent currently needed. And uh, with regard to the last point, Arctic projects in business development strategies, I would like to refer to what my colleague said about uh, the suggestion uh, to set up an Arctic bank. But we need to remember that uh, the Arctic development projects are not uh, so numerous. The state will need uh, to retain its very active presence in infrastructural development and other areas of development. We need to have stable public procurement here, and innovative and innovation should be made a public policy. 
it should be made an intrinsic uh, part of uh, active development, uh, not uh, based upon expeditions. Uh, expeditions will always be like they have always been, but uh, thinking about social and economic social development of Arctic, we need to think various technologies and techniques. Uh, thank you. Uh, and now the floor is given to Valery Mitko. Uh, that's my turn, okay. So I would like to start with the last remark that uh, Victor has made. Well, the first question, uh, that is like a platform for us. Uh, it should be uh, examined, it should be considered in our Polar Academy, we are dealing with that. But if in the Arctic we are using the chef method, uh, with um, like a shore, uh, with a long base, and if we adopt such an approach that in this region uh, the main thing is the results of mineral resources production, it's like a colonial policy. But uh, if the quality of uh, living standards uh, is improving much slower than the production and manufacturing itself, uh, then it is a colony. So uh, the focus should be put on the level of living standards, so the person uh, should be put at the center, at the heart of it. And uh, we mentioned that we don't have uh, necessary aviation and uh, it is um, not possible to bring everything which is necessary for a normal life, and I have already told you about that. In order to um, make the problem specific, when we talk about uh, the exploration of the Arctic region, like the military uh, fleets and other aspects, we are trying to resolve a number of issues. Uh, it's not that um, we don't have the military personnel to wage war in the Arctic, but if we um, just recall the military bases in uh, the past, in the Russian, on the Russian territory, it was uh, not very expensive uh, to develop areas and territories, but it was uh, like a foundation for administrative uh, and management uh, schemes and uh, sources. It's uh, easy to uh, explain uh, this uh, uh, problem to our foreign uh, colleagues, but w uh, as for inventory, we don't uh, uh, develop it anymore in those regions. So that is natural if we have this uh, second question. It's not formulated properly, as I think uh, the Arctic is stimulating investment opportunities. Why? Because a person, a human, is uh, striving at resolving the most complicated issues and the Arctic presents uh, a huge potential for using intellectual um, capabilities of uh, a human mind. So the Arctic is a very important platform for uh, educational uh, potential unlocking and, uh, of course, Today, we don't have um, the sufficient uh, potential. When we talk about the efficient uh, exploration and development of the Arctic, we should uh, uh, pay special attention to different measures that have to be uh, taken by different organizations and uh, institutions. There are many of uh, these steps, but still it is not enough. And I think that we will join our efforts and we will have progress. As for the fourth question, uh, well, as so for uh, having the state government order in place, uh, we are getting back to uh, the following. Uh, for example, in China, they were thinking, what is the difference between China capitalism and capitalism in um, Russia? So first of all, 
in uh, Russia, capitalism is managing the state, and in China it is vice versa. And uh, what Alexander mentioned, uh, state and government planning, how it can be done without the unified efforts of different bodies and ministers. It's not a systematic approach because each ministry is dealing with a specific task and we should have a unified Arctic planning when uh, they're talking about different aspects just just judging from my experience I navigated along the NSR and along the ice and I know what the infrastructure is about and what is the cost is trillions of uh, rubles it, it's um, insufficient support for the infrastructure. I would like to reiterate that. To ensure the necessary transit, it is not enough. It does not comply with the polar code we have. And I don't know how we will be able to do that. But as for this navigation and geographical uh, features, we should have uh, a unified government order because business structures will not be able to achieve it. They will not be able to provide um, this, um, uh, this infrastructure. That is why in the Arctic, the government um, order is the key thing. Thank you. Thank you, Valery. Well, I would like to. Oh, is given to Escom. Not knowing in detail all the plans, I I can say that the the limiting factor or, or bottleneck for developing the Arctic will be funding. It will be very expensive, and if we talk about the mining industry, oil and gas, then of course the income is coming from selling the products, and then the market price is of very big importance. So the speed when the Arctic can be developed will be very much depending on the market uh, development. Thank you. Uh, Alexei Nikitschenko, please. Thank you. Okay, the first question. So the regions of the Arctic region is uh, the platform for the development of infrastructural uh, projects in different areas. I would like to support all the other uh, speakers in terms of the fact that uh, the main driver is the development of uh, uh, mining industry, uh, the development of the transportation um, sector. And I would like to draw your attention to tourism potential because uh, we see that, uh, uh, for example, based on uh, the other examples in other countries, this potential is actively developing and it is uh, underestimated, I think. As for domestic tourism, it is only at uh, the um, uh, early stage of its development uh, in Russia and there are unique opportunities. Uh, these regions have a magnificent beauty in them. As for the idea, uh, about uh, putting the focus on the living standards and the quality of life. I would like to comment on that. Uh, I don't think it will be a driver for the development, but the mining projects will be the driver. And let's be frank, because the majority of uh, the population would not like to live with such uh, severe conditions in the north. And we know the distribution of the population around the world. And uh, people are striving to leave uh, the more favorable condition where it is warm and uh, about their scientific and educational potential, uh, we should be quite flexible here. So to, we have to resolve these uh, questions adopting um, shift approach, so we have to train the personnel, and also we should use their technologies so that uh, we will not need so many specialists to develop uh, Arctic projects in this region. 
but uh, here we also come to uh, the question of uh, innovative uh, potential and about the personnel. There are two main questions. The first one, I would like to um, support my colleagues. We should uh, work out the necessary interregional interaction. We should uh, build it because as we see now, the Arctic is um, not uh, um, profitable business in terms of investment. Uh, of course, uh, the state cannot do that alone. So the state, in terms of innov innovations, it should task, uh, set a specific task to increase the efficiency. And um, we will have uh, a high demand uh, for an efficient interregional cooperation. We are lacking that. And the same applies to the problem of the personnel. So we, we have to build the necessary interaction between all the bodies who are dealing with the Arctic projects and the training of uh, the necessary specialists. As for government order, uh, as I have already mentioned, uh, all the major projects uh, will be implemented uh, with the support of uh, the state, but uh, there is also a question and an issue of efficiency. I would like to put special emphasis on the following. To maximize the effect for our country, we should uh, actively develop our own technologies and our industries. Uh, we should uh, try to implement all the projects with the, in, uh, with the existing prerequisites and groundwork, and it should be uh, based on our own technologies. So we should develop that domestically. There are some good international uh, best practices, like if we consider the space industry, what has been developed by the U.S., and um, it was used in a lot of industries, and they're still doing that. So the Arctic should be used in uh, our country uh, on the basis of this opportunities and investment potential to develop mechanical engineering and other areas of industry. And I would like to summarize by saying that to develop uh, the Arctic region, we should use all the best practices in our country, in the Far East, in the other countries, in uh, priority development areas. And we should uh, you know, work out in detail all the projects um, in terms of NSR, there are many challenges and issues in terms of the concept models. We should um, just focus on specific cargoes and specific details. And then understanding all the details, then uh, we should build the necessary and appropriate interregional cooperation. And I would like to focus uh, the attention uh, on the fact that we should uh, provide a comprehensive picture between uh, a comprehensive picture of uh, the ratio between supply and demand. It is also important for uh, the, the cooperation between agencies. And Mr. Pogodayev, please. Thank you. It is rather difficult to add to what other speakers have mentioned, but I would like uh, to repeat that the bullet point and that the development of the Arctic region should be considered from a, a comprehensive point of view. So uh, we should. Um, uh, just uh, say that uh, environmental issues should be also taken into consideration, though the primary focus should be on uh, the development of the mining industry, and also we should protect the interests of indigenous people. They have lived there for um, hundreds of years, and uh, they have their own living patterns. So we should um, uh, have a look at all these issues from a comprehensive approach.
And we should effectively manage the resources. We should enhance the efficiency of um, the Arctic zone. So we should uh, be using resources in an efficient manner. As for innovative potential, there are different viewpoints. Some people say that uh, we will be uh, developing the production of mineral resources and some innovative technologies, state-of-the-art technologies will be applied for this purpose. But I think we should adopt a broader view. Some specialists uh, say that innovative uh, development of the Arctic region is possible, but what will it be look uh, will, will, what will it look like? Uh, we don't know yet. As for education, educational and scientific potential in the northern region. Uh, we have indigenous population and some people who moved there uh, not um, uh, who moved there recently. We should um, develop the existing potential, but uh, when in innovative uh, projects are implemented in this region, uh, there will be more and more people coming there, more and more specialists. So we will have to cater for them. So I think that we will have to uh, develop, to construct and build uh, new innovative uh, scientific centers uh, in these regions. Many people, uh, many young people, they uh, go to study in Moscow and in St. Petersburg, uh, but uh, then uh, it is very difficult to come, uh, just to get them interested in coming back to uh, the northern region and to apply all uh, the skills they have acquired. Uh, for, uh, this is uh, true for the development of different areas like uh, reindeer breeding and others. So they will have, uh, they will get their education and they will get back. That is the purpose. And the last question about the government order with the existing, under the existing uh, conditions in the Arctic region, uh, the state of infrastructure development, it will be impossible to do anything without the support of the government. So uh, the key role uh, should be uh, played by uh, the state uh, in terms of investing and funding as well. Thank you, Mikhail Alexandrovich. We have uh, um, the possibility to ask two questions from the audience, please. Do we, do we have any questions? We seem not to have any. In which case, I would like to say that uh, all the proposals uh, voiced today by the presenters uh, are highly appreciated. Distinguished speakers, you are very welcome to forward them to the organizers of today's conference, and uh, we shall then integrate them into the summary document of the conference. And secondly, I would like to remind you of the hard times of uh, the catastrophe of uh, Chernobyl. Back then, we got uh, very interesting documents uh, from uh, various state authorities and from the government. Uh, there was a letterhead and uh, there was a watermark all across the page saying relating to Chernobyl. By the same token, all the documents relating to the Arctic zone should have the watermark, uh, top importance, uh, related relating to the